Welcome to today's 3D print. Because of the small issue I had with the firmware on that printer, I decided to make it into two parts because it was getting long. So here is part two of the JG Aurora A5. Unboxing, assembly, and first print. Well, that was a fun night. <laughs> I spent all night attempting to make this printer print and failed miserably. At 5 o'clock in the morning I gave up and went to bed. What's messed up is that I did manage to get one print to print. One time, just once, I got a Marvin to print. Every other time it came out like this. Shredded. Like just under extruding, comes apart. Um, could not get it to print right. Same thing with the Benji's. First layer would print okay, then after that it would die. But, I knew it wasn't the printer, at least not a, a fault in the printer, because every time I went back to the cat, the cat would print okay. And here's the cat, by the way. The cat came out great. So what was the problem? You're not going to believe it. I finally got these to print. Overnight last night, I got that to print. And I went in to check what I did in the slicer, made a couple corrections, and then that stopped printing. So I took the one G code that worked, the Marvin, and then I resliced the Marvin again that didn't work. And I couldn't figure out what the difference was. So I opened the two files in Notepad++ and I was looking through the G code and I was like, I can't see a difference here. You know, I noticed the temperature difference, so I made them the same. And then, uh oh, I broke the G code that worked. All of a sudden, the G code that worked no longer worked. And I was like, no way. No way. Temperature? Really? Came onto the printer, raised the temperature to 210 degrees centigrade, printed fine. Loaded the bad Benchy um, G code, raised the temperature to 210, printed fine. <laughs> Turns out, the firmware in here tries to be smart, and they have a failsafe where it does not wish to print below 200 centigrade. And because I print at 200 centigrade, every time the temperature would fluctuate and dip below 200 centigrade, it would stop working, the extruder would get funny. So I was bumping into the failsafe for low temperature, which they, for whatever stupid reason, set at 200 centigrade, which should be like 160. So I changed all my files, set them up for 210 centigrade. Oh, and the reason they started working fine, the reason I get a good first layer, then nothing after that, is because of the way I do my G-code. I always do my first layer at 225, so it goes down hot and sticky. And then when I hit layer 2, I go back to 200. So layer 1 would print fine, and then when we hit layer 2, as the temperature dropped 200, it would dip below that failsafe and fail. So nothing wrong with the printer, just very bad firmware code. If you're going to have a failsafe of 200C, then you need to make sure that the printer stops when it hits that set temperature and tells you on the screen, low temp. I got no error. So I had no way of knowing that was the problem. It was just pure dumb luck that I happened to be in the G-code and I made that one little change. I changed the 210 to a 200 and then the file stopped working and that's when it clicked that I was hitting a temperature issue. So when you use this, don't use 200C. Make sure you're above 200C by at least five degrees so that if you fluctuate, you don't dip below 200C. Otherwise, it printed absolutely spectacular. The Benchy came out gorgeous, very little noise. It's not noise free, but it's very little noise. Absolutely beautiful benching. This is the filamentum vertical gray. The Marvin came out fantastic. The rocket came out fantastic. This is my test suite that I couldn't get working. So after all that, I was finally able to make it work. Um, and it works fantastically. <laughs> I, I love it. It's great. This is like the um, Anycubic Ultra Base. It's slightly different though, it's not quite the same. The pattern is slightly shallower. The prints actually stick to this a little better. Um, you still need to wipe it with alcohol, they don't stick. Uh, any residue will prevent stiction. But um, I tried to power off um, Resume, it worked. That's actually this one here. You're not gonna be able to see this. I'll show you in the pictures at the end, but it's got a little zit down the bottom there where the power off Resume, because of course it stayed put. Now the good news is it did wait to heat up the nozzle before moving the head back to home so it wasn't sitting inside the model but that was after it powered back on when it powers back on it's going to add it might give you an error saying unable to read card just wait a second for it to finish booting up and read the memory card then hit retry and it'll 
have a resume option. You, you'll be back at the print screen and up here will be a resume button and it will heat back up and resume the print. Now this does not auto release like the Ultra Base does. So the pattern is I guess just different enough that there's a little bit more stiction. I can still just grab the part and pop it right off. Just give it a little twist and you'll hear it actually go pop and the part pops right off. So this should survive a power off resume after cool down in theory. Um, one day I'll have to test that. Actually let it cool all the way down let it sit for an hour, then do the power on resume and see if it actually um, stays put, see if it pops free. But so far, even a thin model like this and like this, while very easily removed, did stay put. They didn't move on their own. You couldn't just touch them and have them remove like the um, Ultra Base does, which is cool. Uh, print volume on this is 305 by 305 by 320, so it's almost a CR10 size printer, actually. CR10 minus 100 millimeter Z height, but it's in a I3 form factor, and it's pretty cool and pretty cheap. It's a nice layout. It's a nice design. Um, one thing I do have some beef with, and it's part of it, is that temperature issue. You can't manually extract the filament. You have to go. There's no lever to free it and pull it and push it and stuff like that. You have to do it all on the screen here, and um, make sure you push before you pull to remove the filament. I would even consider doing it manually. Um, go to this filament movement and you know go five millimeters forward and then go ten back and then do the extract option for the filament change because what will happen is it will create the stringy noose where it'll pull the filament out of the printer but it won't get it all at once so you leave that little bit of string behind and that can inhibit the insertion of new filament. Uh, one time I actually had to pop off the Bowden coupler to push filament in there because a little tiny string got stayed inside there out of the hot zone though so it inhibited the new filament from going in. Um, otherwise, cool printer. It, it looks nice, it performs nice. The noise is actually pretty low except for the cooling fan. It's a, it's a, it's a weird little double fan unit back here. It's got one fan up here for the heat block and the cold end of the hot, hot end and it's got a second pancake fan at the bottom in the same piece, the same unit that makes your blower fan to blow your parts. What I do in my G-code is I set the fan speed maximum for 75% and that high pitched squeal whine that wants to tear your brains out doesn't happen, it only happens at 100%. So run it at 75% and it's not nearly so noisy. Not quiet, but not so noisy, it's actually pretty good. That's it, it's an easy to build printer, four screws, plus three for your filament holder, a largely automated on the screen here, it has power off for zoom and pause functionality, it has filament detection, it's a nice printer and it's all one piece. Everything is self-contained here, you don't have extra bits hanging out, the filament holder is nicely sitting on the back right here like this, I like that and that will easily hold, it should hold a one kilogram roll, actually I should, yep, one kilogram is fine. So you'll have no problem loading one kilogram rolls into this. And nothing special, no DRM, no wacky crap, anything like that. The bed was nice and level. I didn't have any problems leveling it. A um, little finicky because of the positioning of the screws, but once you get it, it stays. It hasn't moved on me yet. I like it. It's a cool printer. Should you get it? I don't know yet. I'll have to test it, run it, beat it up. After I run a couple kilograms of plastic through it, I'll be back to let you know what I think. Here's the sample of it printing and how loud it is. I lowered the fan speed to 75% because it winds like a banshee.